Hey, it's Ken. We're back again for another episode of Coffee with Ken. Hey, in today's episode, I want to talk to you about how I turned into super. All right, listen, I want to have a really good conversation with everybody. And I want to talk about, you know, I've had a lot of people over the last couple of months, especially um, make comments to me like, I don't know how you do all this. I don't know how you move so fast. I don't know how you get so much done. It feels so overwhelming. And I want to talk about that for a second, because um, there's, there's, there's a lot of life lessons in this conversation I want to have with you. And if you are somebody who is an entrepreneur and you want to make money in a business, you want to make more money in your businesses, then you need to grab a cup of coffee, sit down with me and take notes. This is going to be a really important conversation. So for those of you that are just starting to follow me and you don't really know a lot about what I'm up to and what I'm doing, I'm doing a whole bunch of things at the same time. I own a company called Cottage Dream Vacations. It's a portfolio company. What that means is it owns other companies. Inside of Cottage Dream Vacations, we have one of the fastest growing real estate training companies in Canada. And as part of our real estate training company, which is called the Investors Growth Syndicate, we run major events right across Canada called the Real Estate Investor Summits. And we're going to be doing another Real Estate Investor Summit in the fall of this year. And at that event, we're going to have Kevin O'Leary, Michelle Romano, Mike Holmes, and even Barbara Corcoran is going to be, they're all going to be speaking at 800 people in the room. It's going to be unbelievable. But in addition to that, Right as we speak, I'm building three different major resorts across Canada. The Hay Bay Resort in Napanee, Ontario, the Lake St. Peter Resort in um, just north of Bancroft, Ontario, and the Chelton Beach Spa, which is a beautiful spa that we're building in Prince Edward Island. In addition to that, I have nine short-term rental properties, and I also own an active gold mine in British Columbia. And as you guys have seen, for those that are following me, one of the things that you're going to find and you're going to see is I have literally acquired all of these companies or started all these companies with 100% my own capital and money that I've raised from lenders and investors. And raising all that money from lenders and investors, I have followed all the rules for fundraising in Canada. I own a mutual fund trust. A mutual fund trust is an investment vehicle where we can invite Canadians to invest registered funds like RRSPs and RESPs into this fund. Um, and then we can use that money to build the resorts. But we offer uh, significant returns to the investors who invest their registered funds. So if somebody has registered funds and they're only making 2 or 3% with their bank, they can come over, work with us, and make significantly more. But the, the comments that I hear the most, the questions I get asked the most are, how do you do so much? How do you do it all? How is this even possible for somebody to do this? And I want to unpack that today. That's what I want to talk to you about. And I'll tell you the biggest reason that I've decided to have this coffee meeting with you is there's a lot of people, especially my investors, people who have invested their hard-earned money into our projects, they see everything that I'm doing and some of them occasionally are concerned about it. Like they see uh, our Hay Bay Resort, our Hay Bay investors, they see our Hay Bay Resort, it's growing, everything's happening, but they see delays every once in a while, which are really normal in any type of construction development project. Delays are part of the game. But when they see the delays, especially the people that are new to this, they, they immediately start looking at all the things I'm doing and they start thinking to themselves, is this happening? Are we delayed because Ken's got too much going on? So I guess I'm doing this Coffee with Ken session for a number of reasons. Number one, for folks that are following me and trying to learn how to scale their businesses, there's some lessons that you're going to learn in this episode. But also I'm doing this so I can reassure every lender and every investor that we have in our portfolio that I have things completely under control. But how can I say that? How can I say I have things completely under control if I'm building three resorts, I've got nine short-term rentals, I own a hot tub company, which I forgot to mention before, that we took in August when we bought it, it was $80,000 a month in revenue. They're doing last month, we did 400000 a month in revenue. It's growing like crazy. How can I do all this at the same time? Two things that I wanna share with you. Number one, you've heard me say this a boatload of times, 
And that is the old adage, or maybe this is a Ken adage, I don't know. You can't manage anything you can't do. If I look back at my entrepreneurial journey, and I look at the portfolio that I'm managing today, in a, in a pinch, I could literally jump into any one of the companies and do any one of the things. Now, I wouldn't be great at it. Like in the hot tub company, they like all of our hot tubs and covers are made by hand. And I've done it. I've gotten on the floor and I've made these things. And I could literally go back and do it tomorrow. Um, in most of our companies, we use salespeople. We're building a sales team. I can do sales. I used to teach sales for a living. And then, of course, digital marketing. I have been doing digital marketing for 15 years, and that's what all these records are. These are Every one of these records it represents a million dollars in revenue that I've made in a different business, and those are awards for digital marketing excellence. So I've done all these things, and that's probably the biggest thing. You can't manage anything that you can't do. The second part of this framework, if you want to call it that, is I have the right people doing the right jobs. One of my mentors told me that when you're hiring people, hire people fast, fire people faster. So you gotta get the right people in the right jobs. But then there's, there's a challenge that you have with this, right? You can't hire people until you're making enough money that you can afford their salaries because the worst thing you can do in business is hire somebody and not be able to pay them on time. They, they deserve the income that they make and you've got to reward them for that. The other thing is you got to pay for excellence. You got to pay the most money you can. So, so if I was starting again, if you're watching this, you're probably not in a place where you have eight different businesses that you're managing at the same time. If I was starting again, the thing that I would do right from scratch is I would look at all the different things I could do and I would learn new skills. And the number one most important skill, when I look back at the whole journey, the most important skill that I learned is digital marketing. So I started studying digital marketing back in 2012 and I've had an amazing mentor in most of that journey. His name is Russell Brunson, one of the top digital marketers in the world. And when I started learning digital marketing, I was building online courses and teaching people some of the other things that I was learning in digital marketing. But then I also had this love for real estate investing and I've been doing it for over 25 years. So I decided to combine digital marketing, which is a skill that I mastered with real estate investing and teaching people how to invest in real estate. Again, think about what I'm saying. These are skills I mastered first. And I did it well first. So how do you master skills? If Friends, I'm telling you, if there is anybody that's watching these videos and you are not studying digital marketing and you're not learning how to do it, do that. That's probably the best skill in the world we live in today. Learning about how digital marketing works, learning how to run paid advertising and how to use artificial intelligence in marketing I would say if anybody came to me today and said, what should I get into if I'm struggling trying to figure out where I want to go in school? What should I get into? That's what I would tell them to do. Learn that skill first. That's a skill that will set you free. And some of the most important people in the world that you can follow if you want to learn that would be Russell Brunson. Another person is a friend of mine. His name is Alex Hermosi. I haven't actually haven't talked to this man in probably eight or nine years, but we were in Russell Brunson's inner circle together. That's where I met him. Um, he is now the co-owner of a platform called School, S-K-O-O-L. It teaches people how to get into digital marketing and there's a whole bunch of people making money there. So definitely check those resources out and master those skills. Then the other thing that has come from this you know, first of all, I, I, I want to tell, I, I've got to be incessantly clear about this. You can't master anything you can't do, right? So I've gone out and whenever I buy a new company, when I bought the hot tub company, I went down there and I actually made hot tubs. I wanted to be part of that so I could understand it. And then I know that in building any business, revenue is the most important thing. So I have literally spent two decades mastering how to create revenue through digital marketing, through sales, through having great offers, through having great products. And I manage all that stuff in our businesses today. The second part of this, and it jumps over to hiring great people. And the reason why I'm able to do so much today 
listen, the reason why I'm able to do so much today is because I have amazing people. I have a president that is the president of all my companies. So she, there's basically two of us that are on, basically manage the whole portfolio. And her name is Tammy Stanley. She has an operations background. She has um, worked at FedEx for a couple of decades. And when she came to work for me, I started her running operations and gave her the chance to develop the, the experiences of managing people and managing processes. And then when I saw she was ready, I promoted her to the president of the company. So now she's up here managing the whole thing with me. So I've got a sounding board and an incredibly amazing trusting partner to do that with. But then what I do is here, here's the way when you start making money, here's the way you hire people. This is my opinion. You want to start hiring people to do the things you don't like to do so that you as the CEO of the enterprise can keep focusing on revenue generation. That's what I do. In my businesses today, I oversee revenue generation and fundraising, money in the front door. And then I'm hiring a great financial team and operations team to actually manage all the money that comes in. So I don't even manage the money that comes in on a regular basis. I've got people that are smarter than me and better than me to do that stuff. And then on top of that now, I look at, okay, as these businesses grow, I'm always thinking, as these businesses grow, what are the next things that are just gonna take too much of my time so I need to hire other people? And, and with the resorts opening, I went out and I hired a director of marketing. His name is Hassan Rafiq, who literally ran hotels, uh, marketing programs in Dubai. And he was part of a $50 million company. So he came in and he's now the director of marketing. He's taking over marketing. Now he reports to me. I'm still heavily involved in it. But since we hired Hassan, the other things I was doing personally, I was writing all the emails. I was doing all the... Um, uh, all of, I was doing all the images. I was making all the posts. Um, I was doing all the video editing. But now to make the the thing easier for us, now that Hassan is fire, hired, we looked at everything that was going on and now we've hired uh, a graphic designer that does all of the creation. We've hired an email marketer who works full-time for us and does all of our emails. We've hired a video producer and editor who records all the video and does all the editing so now think about what i've got just in what i've told you so far i i know what all these people do so i can watch what they're doing and where i can see things that i think they could improve on i could counsel them and mentor them and help them to become better at their jobs they love their jobs they're experts in those areas i can properly guide and mentor them but now i've got more of my time to create the content that i need to build the awareness, to attract the people to me. And I also know how to generate the leads, which I do with Hassan. And I also know how a sales team should run. So now we can build a sales team and make all that stuff happen. So I guess the moral to the story is, and, and this is for all my investors and lenders. If any of you ever, you know, you're having a bad day and you start to think to yourself, you know, how can Ken do all that? Would he be doing better at this thing I've invested in if you didn't have all those other things going on. The thing I want you to remember and always trust is that I have an amazing team doing this with me. In every one of our companies, we have a general manager that runs it. So at the Hay Bay Resort, we have Kim Garrett Sousa who worked at the Holiday Inn Hotel chain for years. She's our general manager. She's getting ready to open the restaurant and the uh, convenience store welcome center in the fall, the whole resort will be open. She's going to be ready for it. She's going to run it. I have Lisa Beefer, who's the general manager of Canadian Hot Tubs, and she's doing an amazing job there. She's running all the day-to-day -day operations of it. I have Tammy Stanley, who runs the training company as the president of, of everything. She runs everything. She's in charge of all that. I have uh, Dan Buckland who is an engineer, lives in British Columbia. He's the general manager of our gold mine. He's got all that stuff under control. And so what do I really do? And this is how much I've figured this out, how good I am at it. My responsibility is to mentor five people, six people. Well, I'll tell you how many it is. Uh, Kim Garrett Sousa, 
I work directly with her and I'm coaching and mentoring her. Lisa Beefer, I work directly with her, I'm coaching and mentoring her. Tammy Stanley, I coach and mentor her running the company. Dan Buckland, I coach and mentor him running that company. And as we open up new, and of course, Hassan Rafiq, because he's in charge of marketing for everything I coach and mentor him. So that's five people. Um, and, and we have a company that's easily going to break $10 million in total revenues this year through all of our companies and probably $50 million a year after that. And all I'm going to do is keep hiring new general managers, the best general managers I can, and let them manage those companies. And that will keep everything growing the right way. So I hate to burst the bubble, but I'm definitely not Superman. I don't have any superhuman skills. I'm always working on myself. But the moral to this story is, if you want to build a multi-million dollar company for yourself, number one, understand that you can't manage anything that you can't do. So get really great at digital marketing. Get really great at the thing that generates the leads. Get really great at sales. Start hiring people to do the other things so you can stay focused on that. And then once you get really great at it and it grows, then hire other people to start to do those things so that you can coach them through that process. And that's that's kind of really the the method to my madness, the secret to my success, or the icing on my cake, however you want to look at it. Anyway, this turned into a bit of a rant today. I hope you enjoyed a little coffee break with me. If you're watching this on YouTube, then definitely subscribe to our channel and you know get, leave some comments. I'm happy to answer all the questions. If you're listening to this on the podcast, then definitely... Um, Give us a review. Tell us if you want more audios or videos just like this.